Welcome to another edition of Brews and Cruise. I am your host, Chris Jacobson, and I am here with my good friend and also my neighbor who lives two doors away, Fitzy, or as his real name and given name <laughs> is Matthew Fitzgerald, but I like to call him Fitzy for short because it's just a lot, a very easy way coming out. So welcome to the podcast and welcome to Speakeasy Studios. Thank you, sir. Great place. So, uh, thank you. Yeah, and you said that you have a little bit of history that someone yeah. prior owned this you knew their grandparents yep. yeah the nevels uh started valley public supply in here way back when i was a kid grew up uh, my really good friend matt bouchard so this was the shop <laughs> that so is I, interesting. I was hearing as a kid so that's great because cool. i didn't know that and we'll talk a little bit about that since i wasn't aware of that but what we're drinking today is our favorite garage beer and since we're in a garage we are going to take down some surly one-man mosh pit I love it. Let's crack a beer first, and then we will get talking. Sounds good. Oh, got you. A, got you a koozie sponsored by the Craig Jacobson Real Estate. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, sir. Man, this is nothing more than what we just do in the summer. Uh, this is yeah. <laughs> I feel it's just we're inside right now. That's it. There they go. We got those bad boys. Let them roll. Let them roll. <laughs> we can't drink the whole pack, can we? Not I mean. <laughs> well, maybe. Well, I I've, know. I've come close. Well, first of all, sure have a headache let's crack the next this. day. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, cheers first. Cheers. cheers, bud. Oh man. Yep, that's a good hazy right there. This tastes like summer. It's great. So uh, it's a hazy, citrusy, tropical, hazy IPA from Surly, which Surly is just right up the river from us over in the Minneapolis area. So supporting those local breweries around there. Have you ever been here before? I have not been there. Neither have I, and i got to make a trip there sometime. Oh, I'd like to. Same with down in Decora. Yep, Toppling. Toppling would be a good one, too. Hurley and I there? were talking on that one. We had that one on a couple, about a month ago. Yep. That, I like that. That's a good place to go to. Really, really big, too, and it's on the outskirts of Decorah, yeah. so you don't even really know it's there unless you drive to it. But right. uh, this is a really good one. I love this one on the river. This is probably my go-to. And the first time I ever had it was at River City Grill when they did taps on a Tuesday. Still got it on tap. Do you? Yeah, yep. I, know, I know they have it there on tap. When was the first time you ever had this? Uh, I don't even remember. I think I just I started getting into hazies. And I was at uh, MGM, and I saw it, and I thought, well, I'll give it a whirl. Yeah. And I got hooked on it ever since. It's my favorite hazy IPA for sure. And I love this one, too. And the box stands out like a, yeah. like a sore thumb. I don't know why they call it one-man mosh pit, but they must have come up with it somehow. No idea. There's another one that my dad likes. It's called, and it's from the Vikings, I'm assuming. It says, before I die, that's what it's called, before I die. And the can is purple and gold. So yeah. I think it means... Let's win one before yeah, yeah. we die, because as a Vikings Viking. fan, oh, yeah. <laughs> we know all that goes. I guess I haven't heard that one. <laughs> that's a It's a lager, so I know that's okay. why he likes that one. He likes lagers, and we're into IPAs, it seems. Yep, hazies. Uh, not much of the real hoppy stuff. That's why the hazy works well. Yep. Um, a lot of the ales, um, and then your standards, you know. I uh, I did actually get the uh, the new one that they have. What was that one? Not the not the variety pack that they have, but the was it the Imperial Ale? Oh, okay. The juicy, juicy pale ale. Oh, okay. I actually, gotcha. they had that at MGM, so I picked it up yesterday. Had one of them. Not bad. Not not as good as this. Not as good. No, but there's something about bad. this. One, I tell you, it's what. good. This one does. You know, if someone's like, "Hey, I don't like the hoppy IPAs," this is perfect. <laughs> and this is seven point two percent. So it's up there. Yeah, it could kick you on the butt uh, for sure. Has. Especially on the river when yeah. you're sweating and it's hot out. And oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Been there. So th what? other than this one, what would be your next go-to beer? Because you said you're not big into the hoppy stuff, right? No. Um, I do like the Deschutes. They oh, have yeah. like a hazy that's really good. Um, fresh I'll, squeeze, I think, is what you're probably referring to. Is, it's called fresh squeeze, I, I think. I think I believe it is. Yep. That one's not as smooth as this nope. one, though. I just had it recently. Nope. But it's not bad. Um, and then Founders has that all-day IPA. Oh, yeah. Which is not a hazy. But you can drink it all day. The name says it. Like my buddy Brian said, he, he's the one that kind of got me into trying these beers. Sure. I was always just a, a Bud Light, you yeah. know, Coors Light, you name it. Um, and finally one day he's like, D just just try something different. I'm like, yep. I don't, I'm not into it, man. Well, he ended up getting that one. He goes, the name says it all. And I, I, I drank it and I went, no shit, you're not kidding. This yeah. is literally an all day IPA you can drink. Is that the one that has like a car on yeah, it? Yeah, green. Yep. 
green, green with box. a car and something yep. else. I know exactly which one you're talking not, about. I've had not that one. bad. Uh, that kind of got me started on it. I've had some very bad ones that I uh, you know dump out. But, yeah, or save them for someone that does like them, but. This this is the one that's always in my fridge. Yeah, I, I was know. a little little bummed when they discontinued it there for like a year or so. I think they probably thought maybe it'd just be a summer one and then bring it back every summer, but it must have been popular, which we're glad it is. Yeah, I am. <laughs> this was even good in the winter months. Right, right. So I, the funny thing is. Now that you have this and you see me when I come home, mostly in the summer, you'll text me and say, I got a beer with your name on it down here. Come on down. And sometimes mm-hmm. it turns into an all-night event. Sometimes it's, yeah, one, two in the morning for sure. There was that one night when I came home. I think I came home from a golf tournament, and I'm like, hey, I'm like, I got one for you. And you're like, oh, I can only have one. And then it turned into an all-nighter. It was late. That was a late <laughs> night. And we've had many of them. Yeah. So it's funny because you and me, we've been neighbors now just for slightly over two years. It's been that long already. It has. Wow. Uh, January 6th. 7th of 2022 is when I purchased the house. Jeez. And it's so funny though because I love our neighborhood where we're in. Mm-hmm. Everyone around us is just kind of fun. Even we have a wide variety of ages. Oh, absolutely. But obviously, you know when my neighbor's husband or ex-husband comes home, it's it's a good time. <laughs> yep. But yeah, I love just walk down, come on down, have a beer. It's awesome because some nights I'm coming home, I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do, and then all of a sudden you people see me drill outside. run by. Yeah, yep. and you're like, people hey, are come outside, on down. you can figure something out. So it's pretty fun. Yeah, so and I also noticed that you have a Traeger. Oh yeah. And now we have one as well. Yeah. And you're out there all the time. All the time. So what's like the one thing that what would be something that you would pair with this beer on the track? Steak. Just any steak doesn't steak. matter. I ribeye New York strip. Okay, steak, that's what we go for every time. Every time. Do you yeah. do anything else on that besides steaks? Uh, yeah, ribs. I've done uh, pork butts. Um, chick- wife does chicken a lot actually. She'll she'll smoke chicken breasts uh, and have them for. Um, just weekly lunch. Oh, I suppose she'll, that. she'll meal prep for the week. So she'll do that usually on Sundays. Um, yeah. she'll do that and then she'll be doing that in the afternoon and then I'll grill steaks on it afterwards. Yeah. Well, I suppose when you smoke the chicken, it probably doesn't get all dried out. No. Like if you're grilling no. it and that then thing, yeah, it works awesome and it's such good flavor with it too. I mean, I'm, I wish I would have bought one sooner, but yeah, I'm glad I bought one because I'm hooked. Well, and you know, the thing is, I'm a well-done steak guy, so I'll probably get crucified by those <laughs> listening. But it does, when you do it, you're like, so Stephanie, my wife, she puts the prong in to figure out how hot it is inside. And she said a well-done steak is roughly about 161 degrees. So she lets it go to that. But then when I cut it, it doesn't look like a well-done steak. No, it's, it's something not pink, weird. But it's slow. If you cook it slow, it's just it, very weird. Um, seems like that pink color stays fairly long because we just made some steak burgers with some family last weekend and uh i mean they were thick real thick yeah. ones and they were like i think i cooked them to like 150 they were still all pink through the middle but really? i cook it you know low and slow 180 that's yeah. all i did for them was that um, during the super bowl that was super bowl yeah, that's actually what I super bowl weekend yeah so we did i did a rack of uh st louis ribs oh yes uh, little smokies you know just throw them in there some barbecue sauce let them go um and then burgers and hot dogs for the kids so what is uh st louis ribs is that something different it's than just a, normal? a different cut of ribs uh my personal favorite are baby backs okay. always like those the st louis style they're a little bit thicker wider okay um and maybe a little more fatty too in my opinion Of those two, which one do you prefer? Uh, they're two different ones. Uh, if, you, if someone Traeger. Says, Traeger? Okay. Yeah. I mean, the black's great for breakfast. You can't go wrong with it. Breakfast yes. smash burgers are fa- fantastic on it. Yep. Um, but uh, I like to grill my steaks, smoke the steaks, slow, slow, hour and a half, yep. and then reverse sear them on the Blackstone. Okay. So, oh, so you're using both of them. That's how I did. Uh, I recently, summertime's a little easier, cars outside, it's warmer out, you don't have to yep. mess around. Um, so I'll do that in the summertime more. Uh, right now, I bought one of the food propane torches. Oh, what is that? It's literally a propane little canister. Oh, okay, and yeah. And it's a torch, but for oh, nice. food, so it doesn't taste like the 
gas or propane. I know what you're talking about now. So I just sear the steaks out of that when I'm done. Yeah. Works great right on the grill. And you can light your cigar, too, if you have yeah, one. Ex- oh, yeah, in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> so if I had to... I would take Blackstone. It's probably because the food that I like would be better on a Blackstone. Yeah. So I'm big into hibachi. Yeah. Oh, that's great for that. Oh, we it's do Korean so barbecue. Oh, yes. fantastic. Smash burgers. I love those. Yep. French toast, eggs, anything. So I would, if someone says, hey, here's 500 bucks or whatever they cost, yeah. you get to choose one or the other. I'm going Blackstone yeah. for sure. Yeah. And Stephanie cooked in the military, so she's really good you, at it's everything. A, it's a flat top. You can cook everything yep. on it. I mean, it's just... It's it's pretty universal with what you can do with it, but like I said, I just I breakfast is my big thing for it. Yeah. It's, it's easy. You don't have to get in your house and have four different pans going on. You sure, just sure. Go out, throw everything on one big big uh, cast iron. Wasn't it you that came over and was marinating our grill to make it? Uh, wasn't that? Oh, you? we seasoned it. Yeah, you seasoned it. Seasoned it. <laughs> last, last year I brought it. I brought it home, and then the next day you were over there yep. seasoning it perfectly with some, with some garage beers. That's, that was pretty late at night. Beers. We were doing that. Yeah, actually. we were. I do remember that? Stephanie was pretty appreciative. She's like, "Well, oh, yeah. I didn't know I was supposed to do all that." I'm oh like, yeah, got to season them, or they don't work. That's great. Then, so you guys, I, I notice now you guys have Toyotas. Mm-hmm. You're a Toyota family. Yes. And you just got one of the new Sequoias, correct? Twice did, yeah. How is she liking it? Loves it. Really? Yeah, loves now, it. Now, I noticed you still have a black sedan, like a she Camry. She still has her Camry that okay. she bought 10 years, not max, maybe 13 years ago. Okay. Honestly, I don't remember. 13 years ago, maybe. You yeah. guys keep them both then? She's, that's going to be her daily. She's okay. got to commute to La Crosse a couple days a week, yeah. so she's going to put the miles on that and uh, keep the Sequoia low, oh, hopefully. I saw that because it's a platinum, right? Uh, With yeah. With white and black accents. It's awesome. The thing looks sharp. It is sweet. So have you driven it yet? Uh, every time I can. She <laughs> wants to keep it out of the, you know, out of the elements, out of the elements right now, and I get it. So uh, it's been a pretty good winter, so we actually taken out here and there. A yep. um, couple times at the store, um, and then also, you know, her brother came over a couple weeks ago, showed him, took it out. So sure, it's fun. To, it's fun to drive, and there's so many features in that damn thing. I can't. I know. I I, I didn't even probably use half of them. Oh, that, that thing looks just so tough coming down the street. Yeah. And she ordered that like a year prior, didn't she? Yeah, she had to wait a year to get it. Oh man, that, that those are sweet. Like that new Sequoia, the way that because the other ones are very rounded. Very. And I was like, yeah, kind of looks like a beluga whale coming down the street right. actually but the new ones they look fantastic and i drove i did test drive one of the new tundras same motor same everything yeah i mean it rode it's really the frame. i believe it's the same frame as the tundra too. i think so but that mo- that new motor and it's pretty interesting like it's got some power to it i know i, I was pretty surprised by it so well i mean and then when i took it, it you like you said there's so many features in that thing <sighs> It was crazy, Wild. and the Platinum isn't even the top model anymore. No, you get now the Capstone. The Capstone, yeah. yeah. And, and I drove a Capstone Tundra is what I was yep. driving, and I took the TRD Pro out for a spin as well. Yep. And I thought that the TRD Pro rode a little better mm-hmm. because it's got bigger tires on it most likely, and the other one had 22s. The Capstone had 22s on it, so a thinner ru- rubber. Yep. And it, I didn't think it rode as smooth, but I liked the interior of the Capstone way more than the TRD Pro, yeah. but I liked the look of the TRD Pro. If I could mash those two together custom I, order yeah i don't know if you can or not but well most people what they're doing is they'll buy uh, like the 1794 edition yep and then they'll modify and do like the trd off off-road package, package to it. on it that so then sense. you get the little bit of the look of both but mm-hmm. i don't know I, I really love what toyota's doing lately oh, yeah. and i know that you were talking about possibly you're the next one to get an yeah. upgrade on the toyota yep i've been a. Uh, I was a Jeep guy, liked my Jeeps, but they're pretty small. Yeah. Just not a lot of room, but uh, uh, my first Tacoma was a 2013 that I bought and fell absolutely in love with the truck. It was perfect for yep. me, perfect size. I, I don't necessarily need a full size. It'd be great to have the room for going on trips, but wife's got her new car now, so we got that <laughs> that one squared away. You got to take the Sequoia because yep. that thing's beautiful. Yep. So if you uh, get a new one, are you looking at Tundra or sorry, I'm looking Tacoma? at Tacoma again, Tacoma but again? I got I to drive it first. I want to see... Uh, how uh, how it is? It's got that new motor, four cylinder turbo. Ooh, um, oh, it's a four cylinder. Now. Yes, okay. where the Tundras are V six. Yep, twin uh, turbos. Twin turbo. So, I kind of want to see how it works. I mean, some read some stuff online. People like it. They uh, 
I haven't had anything bad to say, and I think the Highlander actually has that motor in it right oh, now. Oh, okay. So the mo the motor's been proven, so it does work. Yep. Um, I just kind of want to feel it out for myself and see how it is. Sometimes those new generations, you got to let the yes. one year go by. Yeah. That's why I was a little hesitant on that Harley a little bit because it is the new motor yeah. that they put in there. But so far, they haven't really had any issues with the motor. It's more of some like speed wobbles things. Yeah. That the, that's not good to have <laughs> not speed great. wobbles on a <laughs> motorcycle. On a bike. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so far, I mean, I don't drive it enough to worry about that yet, but it is a recall. But yeah, you're right. First generation, you never know. I always waited. Uh, I did that for the, this is my third one. So I had a, a 13, a 17, and now a 20. And I waited uh, for, you know, every time they did the new kind of major update on them, yep. I waited a year to get the next year so they could work the bugs out, which I really didn't have any issues with any of them. Uh, I mean, a couple like, you know, recalls for stuff that you take in. One was a shifting problem with the 17. They just took it in, reprogrammed yep. the ECU, done. So it's really the only thing i've ever had with it well it seems like with toyota if you buy a toyota toyota it's like you are a toyota person for life it yeah seems. yeah yeah i can see that i mean it's weird um, my mom is that way yeah I, I i've just had really good luck with them so yeah. it's hard and the, the resale is immaculate on those trucks oh i know it, it's well, crazy you know, jeep isn't that bad either, jeep's not bad either um they they do hold value very well but mm -hmm. it seems like the comas tundras toyotas in general are pretty favorable yeah I mean, that mid-size nice. truck though everyone loves a mid-size yeah. because like you said not everyone needs the full size nope. so it depends on what you're doing and what your line of work is or maybe not you just need it to throw your golf clubs in yeah, for you a, yeah they you don't need a full those size. go in there a lot <laughs> <laughs> i know and that's the next thing i want to get to is you are big into golf huge but i want to talk about what's the hat you're wearing because i just noticed waggle waggle, waggle. Where, is that company from Minnesota? No, I don't. I don't believe so. I just saw it online. They got some cool hats, yeah. cool designs. They have some Minnesota ones, which is kind of dope. Well, so. that's why. I, so I saw the logo on the front. And for those who are listening, he's got a waggle black cap on. It's got looks like a Minnesota logo on top, but it's green, blue, and a little bit of white on it. So I thought maybe it was a Minnesota yeah. company. And I always see it at Shields. It's kind of cool too. They have a. Uh, the state outlined as a golf course. Yeah. Uh, you know, fairway, bunker, green, water hazard. We, that got, is, we got that around here. Yeah, we do. And we've been in a multiple times. Yes. So you're big into golf. And we talked. I mean, you, you could school me on golf on everything from knowledge-wise. So that's where I want to go on with this next is when it comes to golfing, where'd your love first come from? Honestly, it's uh, my buddy who's uh, grandparents – own this place, uh, Valley Public Supply. He worked at a golf course uh, up in Sock Center. He moved away at eighth grade, um, worked at a golf course. He was, every summer he'd come down for a week. And the one summer he came down, he said, do you have golf clubs? And I said, no. I mean, I do, but they're little kids ones. I haven't yeah. golfed in years. And uh, he says, well, do you want to go? And I said, well, yeah, I mean, I'd love to go golf. I mean, I've done it, sure. Yep. I'll just use my dad's. You know, they've been up in the attic for 20 years. <laughs> sure. So he came down, and uh, him and I went to Cedar Valley. And I think that same week we golfed four days because him and I both were kind of like, "Let's." This is pretty fun, actually. Yeah. So we uh, we'd actually take his mom's uh, old. Uh, I can't remember what body Mustang it was. Like it was the Fox body, but the convertible. Oh, like well, a 90, early 90s? Early 90s, late 80s is what that would have been. Yeah. White with like the white, you know, it have rims. red interior? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's definitely the 90s. It's, uh, so 80s we, one. we'd actually we'd take that a couple times <laughs> and drive that down. So that was pretty, that was pretty fun. Um, so, yeah, we started doing that. And then, like I said, he went back. Uh, I think it was that next year, wintertime, springtime. Um, I bought a set of decent irons, my own. Um, and from there on, I just kept doing it, kept getting a little better here and there, marginal improvements, you know, shed five strokes off yeah. um, a year. And uh, after that, I was hooked. So how old were you at that point? Uh, 16. So, oh, so you haven't been doing it really no, that long. I, I never, I golfed as a kid a handful of times. That was it. Okay. Mom and dad kind of did it here and there, but not. Not every day. And now I know that if you're going to do anything in the summer, it's going to be golfing over probably anything. Used to ice fish. Don't do that no more. Used no. to summer fish. <laughs> Still got some of my stuff. I can go do it if, if need be. But well, now you just fish the balls out of the pond. Yeah, exactly. That's a different type of fishing. It, golf's a little more fun. I don't know. It's rewarding. So what are, what are you swinging then? Uh, for sticks? Yep. Uh, I got some Strixons. The, the wife did me a solid last year. 
uh, bought me a whole bag fitting up at Second Swing. So oh yeah, and we're Second Swing. I at? got up in the cities. Okay, St. Paul. So I got uh, driver driver through putter man. So I got the whole bag set up. Oh, all same I, brand. No, nah, no, I got a little hodgepodge of everything. You know, okay. kind of had to hit a few different clubs. Uh, what do I got? A Cobra driver. Um, I have Ping three wood hybrid Strix on irons, Titleist wedges. And I do use a swag putter, but I do have a, a Scotty putter as yeah. well. But oh, yeah. man, you're going like expensive on those putters. I do. I like I like collecting them. It's Aren't kind those of a, swags like five hundred plus dollars? Yeah, some yeah. of the, some of them can be. Yeah. But, yeah. Did you have to? I only have one of them. So oh, all I got okay. is one, and I do use it. I do enjoy it. It's it's pretty nice. Is it is it just as nice as the Scotty? I think so. Yeah. Nope. I mean, okay. they make them down in Illinois, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um. So that's uh. A local, you know, company, so to speak. Sure, yeah. But now that's the place that you told me that they do basically drawings to get head covers, right? So Same they place? do. They do some lottery stuff. Okay. And on that putter, that's how I I won that one was through a lottery. Still had to pay for the thing, but right. it was a lottery. They only made I think a hundred and fifty of them, maybe. Okay. Um. So that's kind of cool. And then uh, on their head cover site, a lot of my buddies, you know, they, they you know I'm obsessed with it. A couple other buddies are into it too, so they they get it. Um, it's just a cool golf company that they just do limited releases. Yep. If you can get on and check out as quick as possible, you can get something that maybe they make 30 of, you That's know, cool. it's kind of cool to have. So I got a couple, a couple covers. I got one for sure. One of one, which is kind of, kind of sweet. Oh, really? Yeah. What's it look like? Uh, they call it a patchwork. So it's literally three covers stitched into one cover. Oh, neat. So, um, I, they do like, uh, it was actually last week when they had the Phoenix open, they yeah. do their recycled uh, day. So what they do is they take all their old covers, maybe stuff that didn't make it or just, you know, got a blemish somewhere, yep. and they cut it, and they just patchwork covers together. Oh, cool. And then they release them, but they can get pretty expensive, you know, 500 bucks a cover. So oh, I didn't get dang. into any of those this time. but So the, you have to put your name in, basically. If your name gets drawn, you have to go and buy it then. You already bought it. You, you don't even have it. a choice. <laughs> oh, that's right. You put your credit card in you first, gotta, don't you? Have to, you have to, yep. <laughs> you sign up for it and then uh, get your credit card in there. And if you win, you get an email saying, congratulations, you just bought your putter. <laughs> well, you know, that's the kind of company you need mm -hmm. is when some people want it so badly that you yep. already have your credit card information plugged right. in. And if you win it, you're already buying yeah, it's it. It's yours, yep. And the thing is, though, with that kind of... I don't know, business model, you know what you're about to sell. You're, yeah, you already were going it? into it with, uh, yeah. I'm willing to buy it if I hit. Yep. You know, so, and I was, didn't care. I'm a big uh, Ryder Cup guy, so red, oh. white, and blue covers, that's my theme. The putter was actually a USA putter theme, so that's why I oh, really that's, like it. Oh, that's nice, yeah, yeah. America. Yep. F yeah. F yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're big into golf, obviously, and do you play tournaments? Just, uh, for fun. I don't do, like, fun. any single man stuff. I, I could. Um, I did do – last fall there was one at actually Westfield that I won, and it was the one-man scramble. One-man mosh pit? Yeah. <laughs> one-man one man mosh pit scramble. Um, actually, I didn't win it. I placed in it. I, I okay. played very well. Um, I think I ended up taking sixth maybe, but – they had uh, it was just one man scramble, hit two balls, two shots every. Oh, every, that sounds it, amazing! It's, it's, it's a, the, I've played a couple of them. They are a lot of fun because I, I always hit a shot in a scramble. And go, God, I can do better than that. Yep. So when you do it by yourself, it's a lot of fun because you might hit a bad shot. And you know, you can do better than that. Um, Basically, a mulligan every shot. Mulligan every shot. You know, so it's <laughs> it's, cool. it's pretty fun. It's uh, pretty cool. Um, I think it was like way late September, so the. It was like maybe 50s out, windy. Yeah. It was cold, so it wasn't great, but it was a, a good uh, Saturday afternoon. Is the, um, is Was there a prize pot or anything? Yeah, it was or? cash. So cash. I ended up getting, I think I got 40 bucks for placing, and then they actually had the par threes. They had closest to the pin. I won both of them. Oh, nice. So I got 20 bucks each for that, I think it was. Were you paired up with someone then? Uh, there was, you just went with a group of three or four. Oh, and then every so basically there's like eight shots out there, so, six to eight shots yeah. out there. Okay. Yeah, the, the group I played with, uh, Tuna Banneke. I'm not sure if you know Tuna. Yep. Do you know Tuna? Uh, so I was with him, and then another gentleman from Rolling Stone, Speltz, Tom. Okay. Like Tom Speltz, I think, if I remember right. 
So I was with them guys. Good, good casual group. It was awesome. Yeah. Laid back golf. A um, couple swear words here and there, you know, but there always golf. is. Yeah, right. Always swear words. Yep. Um, so what did you end up shooting? Were you under par, over par? I was under par. Under par? Um, I think the first nine, I think I went two under. And then the second nine, I believe I went six under. I think I was eight under for the oh, that's tournament. Good. What won it? Do you remember? 14. Who? It was, it was handicap based too. Oh, so, okay. You know, you got some strokes in there. I think I only, I think I only got two strokes. So I'm kind of limited there, you know, Sure. where some others are getting 14, but it, it keeps it fair. Yeah. Well, um, you kind of have to. And that yep. was at Westfield? That was at Westfield. So for those who don't know, Westfield's are kind of our local public course here. Not tough, not easy, just kind of right in the middle. Easy one to go play and it's pretty reasonably priced yep. i would say but nowadays everything's kind of reasonably priced it seems there's yeah. always a special going on cart golf burger for 60 bucks or whatever yeah. it might be you can find those on the weekend all around which i is know nice. what's the, one of your favorite courses you've ever played at do you have a favorite um yeah i, I mean i have some top favorites um just last year i went and played tpc uh blaine so oh, nice i went i went the 3m open when they have that i was fortunate enough to uh, my buddy John was able to get uh, four rounds on there because he works for 3M. So oh, cool! He got he got the hook up from uh, I think the event coordinator for the tournament. He just kind of said, "Hey, oh, I'd love to play here sometime." He was working it. She goes, "I maybe can get you on sometime." You know, when it's a little bit slower. So we ended up going in like mid September. Oh, and awesome! The course was I mean, it's, it's it's fantastic when you can play a tour course. It's it's pretty cool. Um, and earlier that year, I actually went and played uh, TPC Deer Run down in Illinois, oh, so where they have the John Deere Classic. That was fun too. They're just—it's a whole different category. Oh, of I golf. know. It's immaculate. You know, there's not a blade of grass out of place. I mean, they have the money to fund it, though. That's that's yeah. the big thing. Um, so those are those were, I mean, two two really fun courses. Um, Lasonia, uh, Green Lake, Wisconsin. Okay, that's, I don't know. It's that a top one. 100 course. Um, Pretty old course. Um, hole seven, I believe, is one of their signature holes. Um, it actually has an old, like two old train cars buried underneath the green to get at the elevation. Oh, cool. so it's a, a pretty, pretty old course, pretty cool. And it's like number 87 or 88 when I played it in oh, the U.S. So it's, okay. it's a pretty cool track. What does it do you when you went? Did you have to pay? I assume. Yes. Is it quite spendy or not uh, as bad as one might think reasonable uh i want to say i believe it was they have two courses so they have the sonia Lynx and then the woodlands the woodlands reminds me a lot of like cedar valley and bridges kind of blended together okay um and then the Lynx is i mean it's a link style course so i, I like those it, they're fun challenging if you haven't played them in a while and we were used to playing like you know the yep. courses around here um where if you putt and your ball rolls off you know off the green it's going to stop in the rough three feet not sure. go down 20 feet oh um, I, yeah I didn't think but about i do that. i do like that because it keeps it fun um challenging you know yep. different different way to mindset to play golf but um that one was pretty fun i think they had a package deal uh it was like 150 bucks to play one day or no hey to play same day it was 150 bucks but you played both courses so we played the links wow. in the morning and the woodlands in the afternoon so that's reasonable that was pretty I fun think. no it wasn't bad at all is there carts or did you have to there walk was carts. okay yep did you do like the 90 degree rule or uh did no, really no they, it was mid some memorial day weekend so it wasn't too bad it was all dry right out. well that that sounds like a lot of fun because i the most or the probably the nicest place i've ever played at was Northern Bay up by Wisconsin Dells area it was yep. for my bachelor party. Yep. And that was probably the nicest one I ever played at. Other than the one time when I was in golf um, for my first year of college, I played and we went to Burlington, Iowa, mm. and we played at Spirit Hollow, it's called. I don't know if you've ever been there. Actually, I've, I think I have that on my bucket list to play. Okay. Well, we I believe. Yeah, we had a tournament there, and it was something else. Couldn't break 90. I believe, I believe <laughs> that's it, yeah. Yeah, no um, – like, like when you're in the rough, it's not a rough. And I've no. said this before. It's not like, oh, just longer grass. No, it's thick, it's longer grass. Thick. And then there's another one on top of that next to it that's even worse. Yeah. So No, it's brutal. This, those yep. courses are they're tough. Um, 3M was if you were in the fairway, you were safe. Yeah. I mean, that rough was 
four or five five inches thick i mean that wasn't even tournament time it was end of the year but it was thick yeah but the greens were immaculate the fairways were like a highway i mean your ball rolled for days sure um the greens actually greens, stick yeah stick and when Roll you hit true. your line they they rolled perfectly so it was pretty cool um this uh coming up may i believe it is we're gonna go play a buddy joe of mine he he's uh part of a group uh no laying up golf group he got into yep okay. um he wanted me to get into it. It's something. It's pretty cool. Um, you go around and play all these other courses. It's actually like tournament based too. Um, so it's handicap based. And you meet a bunch of people, but they have different sections. You know, so like Wisconsin, Minnesota, yeah. the, the Dakotas possibly. So they play in the area. So I, I played for one of them uh, that a guy brought to Cedar Valley, and we had to play. I think it was the front nine, and then play the monster. Yeah, and I played like absolute trash on the monster wasn't even coming close but my buddy joe actually took first so he qualified to get to the next uh tournament which if i remember right that one was up in the cities at stone ridge which i played there like a month before he had to that course is a really fun course uh it was built in like early 2000s i think all right or maybe even late it's not a very old course but a very nice course, 120 bucks. They have carts out. It's a it's a link style course, but very uh, very fun. It's in I believe Hudson. Do you consider Trempolo Mountain like a link style course? Kind kinda. of. Kind of. Okay. Kinda. I mean, the closest we have. Yeah. I wouldn't say we had much else closer. I'd say that's like that. probably the closest. Um, the only other one, I, like the Jewel, they have a couple holes that are set up link style. Okay. But you know. They're woodlands kind. I mean, I, I call them like a like a semi, um, a little bit of both. Um, but Trempolo, they still have the rough, you know, around the greens. So okay. it, it's, it's set up as a link style with you know just holes back yep. and forth. Yep. Um, but not really the 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 greens condition. I would sure. call it. Yeah, and so that's I've never played the Jewel, and everyone tells me that's just an oh, amazing we're gonna course. Go. Okay, it's fantastic. I'll be waiting for my. It's phone call. literally. <laughs> Not, Bridges love it. Home course been yep. there for nine years or something. Sure, love that course. Uh, Jewel, is, it's it's just different, you know. Um, really big, wide open. The the place is Ooh, like huge. Um, very nice though. I mean, they keep it keep it um, really really you know manicured. Uh, it, it's the bridges finally got paved cart paths. When you go to the Jewel, they they already had that, so it was like driving on a highway. Oh, it nice. was yeah, nice, super nice. So, um, really good course. We'll we'll go play it, and reasonable too. I think it's like eighty bucks. Oh, that's not bad with cart too. With I cart, yeah. eighty bucks. It's usually like eighty four bucks. I think the last time I played with cart, eighteen holes, and a, a bag of range balls. Oh, that's not bad at no. all. I mean, I remember when that was first being built. I was like, I want to say maybe in like. Or late 90s i remember all the hype was around that because i think hale Irwin was he was a designer he was a designer of it yep. yeah i asked that to one of my last previous guests i can't remember who it was but they weren't sure and so he just kind of confirmed yep. that because my buddy i think his mom was going to work for the accounting portion of that and yeah. i think that's how i got to understand this course was coming but i think it was like 99 or somewhere in that area is when it was being designed i don't know when it was designed or built but i mean it was yeah, it's not hale that Irwin. old Nope, and then he also designed another. They call it a sister course, and I, I don't know how accurate that is, but someone had mentioned it was a sister course, and they call it the Emerald, I think. Oh, okay. And that's up in the cities. Oh. Uh, Appleton, possibly, somewhere up that way. Um, and I, I kind of want to go play that because it's same designer, you know, sure. just to see what the differences are, um, how how comparable they are. It'd be kind of fun. I gotta crack another one here, right by the mic. Ah, uh, it's the sound of summer being cracked. But oh, but anyway, my buddy Joe, I didn't, I didn't finish. Uh, so he's been doing this golf thing, kind of traveling around to different courses here and there. Um, and what's it called again? He's no of? laying up. Okay. Uh, it's kind of what it's called. It's a golf group thing. You can join. Anyone can join it too. It's handicap based. Right. Um, but he played in Nebraska at uh, a a course that recently just started. I think in like 2019 or 2020. Um, so we're going to go out in May and go play this course, and it's, uh, God darn it, I can't remember the name of it. Well, you look it up. I'm drawing a blank, and I shouldn't be. Um, you have notes on your phone for courses you're going to play? I do have a bucket list. 
I love that. I gotta. How many how many courses do you think you have on there that you want to go to? On my phone? Yeah. Quite a few. Okay. I, I got a lot of, I mean, there's obviously like, there's the courses for, you know, Pebble Beach. Well, but, yeah. You know, um, a lot of Minnesota ones, but uh, Dakota Ridge, that's a, that's like one of the top three in Minnesota to play. All right. Up by Duluth area. Giants okay. Ridge, same thing. Fortune Bay and... You know, I got a Burl Oaks on there too. There's, I mean, there's a bunch, bunch of courses I just want to go pay, play. Um, but the one that's in Nebraska is called Landman. Okay. And my buddy Joe played that, and he was telling me all about it. Pictures. I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere. He's, it's literally a field. You're surrounded by cornfields. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and he says uh, it's, it's. Uh, they do tea times once a year. So on December twenty thirty first, I think it was, they release their tea time sheet for the year. And they fill up that fast. Joe logged in. Yeah. Got a tea time. We kind of talked, you know, like pick, pick, uh, just pick days. Pick a weekday. I don't care. We're going to go do this, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't want to miss out because he said it's a blast. Because when um, the No Lane Up um, team, they, they like basically got the whole course. So he was able to play that way. Otherwise, you got to get a tea time at the beginning of the year. And that's the only time you can play it. Ooh. So he, uh, he knew about it, waited on the, the list, the notification, got it, and uh, booked it for, I think, like May 23rd, 24th, something like that, Thursday, Friday. Well, we're going to go play another course on the way back somewhere, either in Iowa um, uh, or maybe in Nebraska still, just another course. But Where about in Nebraska is it? Don't even know. Don't even know? It's not. It's like about a six-hour drive. Okay. So, so it's probably by it's, about Omaha, I would say, because... My near, buddy Hurley's from that, and he takes him about five hours to get to Lincoln, Omaha area. Yeah. So it's probably around there somewhere. Near there. I can't remember the city it's in. Um, but, yeah, we're going to go do that in May, so that'll be kind of fun. And the tea times fill so up they, like, immediately? So, uh, let's see. So he, he I, th I think he said it was a half hour there, all gone. Oh, that's like swag golf. So, yeah, it is. <laughs> well, they actually had a little more time on that, actually, yeah, to get a tea time. Half hour. Usually it's 30 seconds, and it's gone. But yeah, he uh, he got it, and then he said he kept looking on there, and he said, but after a half hour, everything was sold out. So, wow, that must be nuts that you yeah. could just have a course that good yep. that people will travel to, yep. no matter what the hell the tea yep. time is. And they do um, they do a, a very long between usually like a seven minute rule. That's you know your yep. seven minutes next next. I think he said it was twenty five minutes or fifteen minutes between groups. Oh, okay. Which is kind of nice to take it all in and enjoy because sure. he said there's a lot of greens where, um, one in particular he mentioned that there's a big back hill behind it, and one of his playing partners hit a shot and went, "Oh no, sit down, sit down, sit down!" And I mean, he flew the green, but he hit the hill and it rolled all the way back down to the green. Like <laughs> so, he said like when he was out there, they would you know someone would have a putt and they're like, "Oh man, I want to go try that." So he's like, "They're." people messing around a little bit, taking advantage of the course and the time. Yeah. Because um, right. you're not rushed. So he goes, you know, you just go out and hit some shots that you're probably not going to hit on another course. You right, know? yeah. So it's pretty and what's cool. that one called again? Uh, Landman. Landman. Yep. Okay, I'm going to look that one up because I've never even heard of it's, it before. It's new, very new. Oh, it's, very all, new. it's less than five years old, I believe. Okay. Uh, they held, uh, I think it was a, I don't know if it was a web.com or uh, they held some tournament uh, like, early like usually it's years before you get a a ncaa or you know a web type tournament yep in their second year they got one oh, like wow. that's how good the course is it's it's pretty cool course impressive impressive Very. now going back to your start of golf question i have for you for anyone that's getting into the sport of golf we all know sports aren't cheap this is another one that's definitely not cheap mm -hmm. what would you say the first step to getting into golf what would you say this is what you should go and do Right away, if you're thinking about getting into golf, what would you suggest someone do? Get clubs, I, I, uh, get lessons. I'd just... go get clubs. Um, I'd, I'd go to a garage sale, find something that's from like you know the 2000s. You know, yep. doesn't need to be anything crazy. Go spend 50 bucks on someone's old bag. It'll sure. it'll work. Yep. At least you can try it to see if you like it. Yep. Because there's a lot of people that just there. I don't like it. Yeah, and that, that, that's fine. It's fair. That's how it works. Yeah. Um, or it's it's fun, but I suck. I'm not doing it. But everyone sucked. I remember when I was shooting 121, you know, <laughs> like that's what I shot. No wonder you're able to shave five strokes I, off a year. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but I mean, I never did lessons. And I think that actually would be a good thing to do is if you actually do like it, go sign up and try to get a lesson somewhere to make, get some better fundamentals down. Because yeah. it's, it's a lot different than baseball. 
you played softball, yep. baseball. It's a different swing. It's old, um, it certainly is. And uh, you, you kind of need to get the fundamentals down of that. And, you know, everyone wants to crank at 300 yards. You don't need to. You, you, you can hit it 250, 225. It's just you get, get good at your, your wedges, your irons, and your putter. That is true because if you go and watch some of the older guys, they're just plucking it down there a little over 200 yards. And, they, as long can, as it's and they can shoot 81 every single day of the yeah. week. You know what I mean? And so. for those who aren't maybe into golf or you're new to golf, shooting par is what you're trying to do. That's the whole thing. So they always say, don't play the person, play the course. you got to play the course. And if you take your eye off of that, sometimes you'll look at someone else and go, oh, they shanked a shot. I'm good now if I accidentally shank a shot. And what do you do next? You shank the shot. Now right. it's even worse, possibly. So you're trying to hit par. Yep. And for those who don't know, 72 is usually standard for par of a course, 18 holes, that is. And um, shooting in the 80s or low 80s is pretty good, especially if you're not a professional. Absolutely. I mean, even watch those professionals. Sometimes they're shooting sky-high numbers, too. Not like they're trying to do that. No. But, but golf it happens. Is, golf I, uh, is a different breed. Every course is different. I have my... <clears throat> I have my good rounds, my bad rounds, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty consistent. I usually, I shoot like mid to high 70s on a regular basis. Um, but I have also been shooting those for the last couple of years. Um, getting getting fitted for clubs actually has been a game changer. Actually, I dropped two strokes just by getting fitted. Yep. Um, the clubs are kind of for you, dialed in for you, your swing, everything, your launch. I mean, they the numbers that the guy gave me blew my mind at how much goes into just hitting a golf ball. Yeah. Um, so the numbers are really cool that, you know, from this iron to this iron, I've gained 10 yards and also 15 feet of height. And I was like, really? They're like damn near the same thing. How? Yep. It's in the shaft. A lot of the, the, the club head helps, definitely, but a lot of your uh, technology is in the shaft. Oh. That's, that's what can help you slice the ball, hook the ball, keep it straight, keep it high, keep it low. A lot of that's in there. And then, obviously, the club head is more forgiving or not if you're hitting sure. a blade or not. But the shafts are a very critical um, thing to get. So someone new getting into it, you know, find something that, you know, it's cheap, see if you like it. Um, and I, I would suggest getting fitted. Um, it's expensive, but you can have your clubs for five, 10 years and do it again. So really upfront investments a lot, but, um, if you get fitted and then go get lessons, uh, you could, could be pretty good. I mean, yeah. it, it'll work. It's, uh, the reason I like it so much, it's, it's, uh, it's a rewarding game. Yeah, it can be. It's humbling. <laughs> yeah, that too. Um, and also it's, it's, it's. I'll say relaxing for me. Like I enjoy it. Like oh, yeah. it, it, it gets frustrating, um, but it's a lot of fun because it's it's just the unbeatable game. I'm out there every time trying to you know beat my lowest score, beat yesterday's round. Um, just those once in a lifetime shots, getting an albatross, yeah. getting a hole in one. That's that's what's fun. So, Tell everyone what an albatross is real quick. So an albatross is uh, holing out on a par five and two. Okay, so two uh, shots on a par five. For those who don't know, the way golf works is you are trying to get on the green, usually on a par five, in three shots, and then you're supposed to two putt in for par. Well, an albatross is getting in on two, so basically you have to have a very nice drive, an amazing second shot, and it goes in the hole for a two instead of a five, because five is the par what you're supposed to shoot. If you can shoot three strokes less than that, it's amazing. Yep, better so, than a hole in one, actually. Have you had a hole in one yet? Nope. Nope, neither have Come I. I'm close. You're close. Come close a lot. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, no albatross either. No albatross. Okay. Uh, never, never came close on one of them. I mean, uh, I was in a group actually. Uh, Ryan Myers, uh, owner of Pack and Mail. Okay. I played in a tournament with him and Brett Schmidt and uh, Tom Schmidt, uh, and it was I think it was maybe the Winona Radio one, if I remember right. Was it this past summer? Uh, well, no, this year. is well. They have it every year. But no, I know that, but what you're about the story? I feel like you I told think it me was this. two years ago. Okay. If I remember right. And uh, Ryan, uh, it was hole five at Bridges, and he hit his drive. Yep. Ended up being a really good drive. Um, so we took his drive. Uh, we all hit our second shots. He hit his second shot. And I just remember looking. We were, we were going over club choices, and I can't remember what we were out. But he's like, I'm going to go nine iron. And I was like, nine iron? I go, I don't think you're going to get there. I don't, I don't think that's enough, man. We're out, we're out quite a ways yet. I said, and uphill. He goes, Oh, you're right uphill. I said, take an eight. 
It will be on the green at least. Don't be short in the bunker because it was a front front pin. Yeah. And uh, he goes, all right. And he hit, and he barely cleared the tree branch by like an inch. And he, he directly at the hole, and I thought, that's going to be, that's good. That's an eagle right there, man. We're driving up, and he's in the other cart behind. And all of a sudden, I went, dude, you're, you're in. No, I'm not. I went, you're in the hole. You just dunked that. And he goes, no way. That's sweet. Go up there, albatross. And I mean, so he soloed it in a tournament. That's awesome. So that's pretty cool. But you're right. That is more impressive because of the fact that usually, usually you're further away, way further away, yep. usually at least 200 plus. Yep. And most of our par fives around here, are maybe 150 to 170 par away. Yeah. Par threes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Par fives. Yeah. Are, we, have, we have some shorter ones, but I know that one's a dog leg left. Yeah. And I, and there is a bunker on the front. I believe so we right. were like 160 out if I remember right. Yeah. Like it was a, a really good drive, um, but we were still 160 or 150 out. And I was just like, I don't. I don't, I don't think a nine's going to get there, man, because I'm not hitting a nine. Like, I, I, I know I'm not being short on this one and going in the bunker in a, a scramble. Right, yeah, and there's bunkers right in the front right of that. Mm, and that's and right where the pin was it's usually just where behind it. it yep. Oh, yeah. So, so the other thing I love about golf, and this is just me, I, and you said it's relaxing for you, and I agree with that because my dad would say the opposite. It's stressful for him. It's just yeah. annoying, and everyone's <laughs> different. And I feel like you got that love-hate. It's either you, mm -hmm. it's relaxing, or it's not. And I love the atmosphere that comes around the golf. Yep. I, there's, I don't know what it is. It's just Usually when you play, obviously, it's a beautiful day out for the most part. You don't usually go play on a crappy day. Right. So everything looks green. It looks great. It's kind of ritzier, I would say, which I love that. And I am a bad birdie fan. Yep. And I, well, I'm the person that if I were to go to a tournament before, I'd be wearing a cutoff shirt and just some <laughs> basketball shorts because I just, I just like having um, you know, room to move. But I found with this company that their polos are just comfortable. amazing and comfortable, and I can move easy in these ones. So I don't know. So I wore Bad Birdie because well, we're, I knew we were going to talk about golf here. This oh, yeah. is my favorite golf company that's out there right now, and I think they're based out of Arizona. But I love this. Going over to you, what is like – if you're going out in the golf course, what's that one outfit – this is what I'm wearing today. Uh, Roback polo. Okay. Uh, huge fan. Buddy Joe got me hooked on them. He bought one one time. They're expensive, they're like 90 bucks a piece, but okay. uh, they do have some sales here and there. Uh, they have the longest day of the year sale, so you get 20% off. So that's usually when I stock up and buy like four or five. All right. Uh, but I, I, got, I got quite a fleet now. i um, been rocking them for a couple of years, but they're just breathable, wicking. I mean, Under Armour was awesome. This is ten times better. Really, the the fabric. I mean, they're the way. There's no tags in the crap. No uncomfortable spots. Sure. I mean, you feel like you're wearing nothing. It's that's the it's best feel. Pretty nice. So I'm a big fan of uh, rowback polos. Um, I still got to go with Under Armour's pants. Okay. I'm a big fan of. I'm a pants golfer. Not right. a shorts golfer. I'm a shorts golfer. I'm a pants golfer. <laughs> uh, Under Armour makes some nice pants. Uh, some of them they do like I think it's called like their heat gear. So there's actually like little tiny holes in the material. Sure. It's basically like wear like breathable pants. So okay. everyone gives me shit for it. Everyone I golf with, it'll be 90 degrees. I'm wearing pants. I just have <laughs> oh, always man. done it. I spent a lot of time in the woods finding golf balls oh, when man, I first yeah. started. And you weren't doing it with shorts. I mean, I was on jeans back then. Um, so it kind of became a habit then, you know. And plus, you see it on TV. It's pants. Yep. It's polo, you know, kind of. Well, I mean, except for now, I see live now. They they can change it, yeah. We're pretty, pretty relaxed. PGA is still polo pants. Yep. I, me personally, I don't care. I don't care if it's pants or shorts. Doesn't matter to me. Yeah. It's golf. That's what you're there watching anyway. Not mm -hmm. someone's. You know, not not Phil's calves. <laughs> Apparently, the whole world was though. <laughs> They're watching his calves. His calves are massive. Oh, yeah. You gotta look it up. I will. Have to look I mean, it's, don't tell Stephanie. <laughs> she won't listen to this. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. So then, okay, so. Shirt, you got rowback, is that what it's called? Rowback, yep. Under Armour pants. What do we got for the cleats? Uh, uh, got some Jordans. All right. I'm a fan. Um, uh, recently, I just got some Echoes. Uh, ECO? Yeah. Oh, those ones? E CCO. ECCO, okay. Um, got some of those. Uh, the Boas, just super comfortable. Try, just I tried them out, and I actually really like those, too, so I bought a second pair. But and I do the, have some Jordans as and well. And the boas are where you just twist, twist them. it and it tightens up. Okay, yep. that's how the snowboarding boots are yep. too for me. Super comfortable, breathable too, but they're also Gore-Tex, which is wild. 
So they're waterproof, which is nice. That is nice. Early morning rounds when it's dewy. I've had a couple pairs where, you know, your toes Soaked. are just soggy and it's miserable. But you like, so you like the Jordan ones too? Because I have the same ones. I don't mind. Yeah, the Jordan 12s. Yeah, um, I also have the, I believe they're the four sixes or fours. Fours maybe. Oh, you bought those too? I have those. Those are oh, kind of nice. Oh, those are sweet. I like those better than the What 12s. color are they? Ah, uh, gray. Gray? Okay. Yep. So that's. I, I like those, I think, better than the 12s personally. Yeah, okay. Yeah. See, I. I I hadn't, you know, my club, I was telling you my club situation, I had mine from 99 yeah. until last summer when I finally mm-hmm. upgraded after 23 years. And so I also upgraded my shoes because they were at least 10 years old, I would say. And I went with the Jordans as well. I thought they were just cool looking. They're but comfy. They're, they are comfy. And the other thing is they're leather. Yeah. So you, they should be pretty waterproof. Very. But also they're very, I guess for me it's a low top, so it's more supportive than I was expecting. Yeah, and I I just love them. I think they're fantastic looking. I get crap for it all the time. Yeah. People are like, "Oh, you got Jordans on in the golf course." I'm like, eh, well, "Yeah, that's what try, I like." I, try try them out. Yeah. They are comfortable. Like I I they're they're kind of big and bulky. Yeah, not the twelves. The fours I got are just they feel like I'm wearing moon boots, but they are comfortable. Really, they are comfortable. Like so much support. Those are like a little bit more of the high top, you know. Yep. Um, Super comfortable though. Like I, I, I didn't know if I was gonna be a fan, and I was a fan. But I got, then I got those Echoes, and they're super lightweight. Like I said, and they're they're not they're spikeless. Uh, usually Ooh. I'm a spike guy, yeah, and I always have been. But I gave these a shot just to try them out. I haven't slipped. Like they've worked out really well. I see that a lot nowadays. Spikeless, which yep. seems awesome too. And um, so then, what are you wearing for gloves or gloves? Uh, usually, I usually like the uh, the Foot Joys. So um, I do too. Or the Titleist Permasoft. That's been a go-to. Oh, those are good ones too. Um, they don't sure don't last long though. It's I like know. Once a month. I mean, I get a lot of rounds of golfing, so, so yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, you know, usually my goal is to try to hit 50 rounds, just individual rounds, tournaments. I don't count those. Wife always goes, "Oh, come on, you golf more than 50 <laughs> times." I go, "Well, yeah, tournaments. Yeah. Those are scrambles. That's a team. That's thing. where that's where I make my living. That's honey. a team's thing. Yeah." <laughs> I go, I'm just talking solo around, so I usually get, like, you know, probably around 65, 70 golf rounds in a year. Oh, that's that's quite a bit. That's, that's what I like. way more than me. I, I'm maybe at a dozen at best, and that's yeah. tournaments. <laughs> that's yep. tournaments. I know the first year I got a membership, I was second highest for rounds played, and it was 151 rounds. Woo! That was no kid, and the wife worked three jobs, so I... I had nothing but time. And your job was just to be a great golfer? Yep, yep. It was go to work and then go golf after work every single day. Um, the, uh, the, the gentleman, there was a gentleman there that had 200 rounds. Whoa. He was a retired guy that worked, I think, for Winona State Maintenance or something. His name oh, was, sure. was Richard. But, uh, yeah, he, uh, he had, like, 200 rounds. Is that the Bridges? Yeah, it was at the Bridges. Oh, man. He yeah. got his membership worth. Oh, uh, yeah. He was retired. So, I mean, he went. He, I'd see him out there all the time. Played a couple yep. rounds with him. Um, he'd play usually two times a day. And he, oh. was, he was in his late 60s. Like 218 rounds a day? Yeah. Oh, that's 36 holes. Yeah, he played 36 <laughs> holes a day. He, early morning, then he'd do afternoon. And wow. he, every day he was out there. And finally someone said, what are you trying to do, catch up to Richard? And I said, catch up to Richard with what? Rounds played. I go, well, what's he at? And they told me, I'm not going to catch that. Are you nuts? <laughs> I got like a month left of golf, and he's at like, you know, it was like 180 or something at the time, and I had like one, 140, I think. I was like, I'm not catching that. Yeah. I ended up getting 151, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. I used to do like 18 holes a day when I was younger, and I thought that was a lot, but no, not near that. No. 18 and 18, that's a lot. A day. Uh, do a 36 hole day. I, oof. That's like a full time job almost. That's, that's, uh, yeah. If you're by yourself, you probably get done in three hours. If you're by yourself and there's no one out there, piece of cake, but you're going to, I mean, I'll go do. Th- 36 here and there if, if, if it's a monday and i have off and i just want to go do something and it's yep. dead out i'll go do it um i mean i can get done in like two hours and 15 minutes in a cart by myself so oh, it's that's... not terrible but uh if, if i just went back to back did it again i'd be pretty gassed on that last nine yeah i would say you so know? It, you know some people look at it like ah, golf that ain't that hard but it does yeah. gas you after a while all those swings just yep. and then staying saying accurate or consistent is the hardest part about golf right i mean the ball's not even moving no but you like you said you got to play the course and trying to play the course is not as easy as it sounds no. but being consistent because like you were saying with the baseball 
You know, I you know, go out there and play softball, baseball. You're just trying to hit the piss out of the ball, mm-hmm. basically. This, you're trying to aim the ball where you don't you care want left it. or right. You yeah. just want to hit the shit out of it and yep. get over the fence. That's exactly it. Uh, not every hole goes left, no, which sucks. Right. So trying to be able to work the ball um, can help. Um, it's not easy to try to teach someone. You know, someone like, well, how do you hit a cut? And I was never taught, never had lessons. I just learned, watch videos, listen. Oh, yeah. And I understand the, the fundamental of swinging inside or outside. Yep. So I can hit a cut. I can hit a draw. Does it happen all the time on command? No, but for the most part, it does. It does something. I, yeah, it, it does usually what I want. Sure. You know, but I'm not a professional by any means, so I'll miss. But um, the other thing, too, is just... I kind of tell people when they first start golfing is just whatever you like, whatever your stock shot is, stick with it. Don't change nothing. Yeah. Well, but I'm over here because when you miss on a golf course and you miss to the right, it's really easy for you to get out of trouble because you just aim left if your ball misses right. Yeah. Right. Same if if you miss left. It's if you miss right. It, but then you miss left. That's going to be your hard part because then you're taking on trees or, you know, you're or, yeah. punching out. So usually, like, your misses aren't a bad thing. You're usually, if your miss is what your miss should be, right or left, and you're on that side, it's easy for you to hit the next shot because your miss, you know, your fairway's open, so sure. to speak. Yeah, so, I never thought about that. Yeah, it's kind of like that's how that works. It's just you're in trouble when you crisscross and do the opposite. <laughs> sure. That's that's when people Trying to struggle. Correct. Yep. Um, uh, but I just say stick with your standard shot. Like everyone has a standard shot, whether you know it or not, you go out and hit a ball. Yep. It's like, I have a standard little baby draw. That's my standard shot. It's that's what I have always had. And I probably some of it from baseball, but I didn't play baseball right up leading to golf. It was, I played baseball was done for probably, I don't know, eight years or something, yep. middle school, whatever it was. And then, um, just got into golf. So like I had a swing and it might've been semi baseball swing, but it worked out. Okay, so okay. I got I got you know standard standard little draw, yep. um, buddy Joe. You know he's got a nice little butter fade. We call it. This guy can smash the ball, and it's it's fun to watch. Yeah. What's your biggest struggle right now in golf? Like if you go out in the summer, like man, I just can't overcome. We'll fill in the blank. Mm. I'll tell you what mine is right now. Mine is always trying not to use too much right hand because I'm like you, where I naturally yep. have a draw to it yep but i don't want it to be a hook and that exactly. happens sometimes if i'm baseball going up players and, man i know that's what it is yeah, i play softball like three yep. nights a week yep. so that's my biggest thing is always the right hand too much right hand coming through yep. it used to be a slice but then i started tightening up my grip and when you start tightening up your grip that's when things just go bad mm-hmm. and sometimes i know that those people have those fat shafts or those fat grips yeah. on the uh putters so they don't do that right. those soft touches or whatever they're by but anyways that would be my big struggle right now like when i go out don't hook it don't hook it don't hook it right because you don't get any distance anyways i'd rather slice it because at least i'm gonna get a little bit more distance out of it but that'd be my biggest struggle i don't know what yours is mine is more or less just uh like just distance i I, like i see a number and i i usually i have a tendency to kind of throttle off a little bit okay because there's nothing worse than being long like on a green and short side, like if it's a if it's a front pin, I don't care if I'm a little long. I'm gonna swing full because if it's a front pin, I can be mid green. I'm on the green. I can putt back. Sure. But when it's a deep pin, my biggest thing is is either a not giving it enough or b giving too much. But usually I'm always short because I'm like, well, I'm not going deep. Well, then I'm at the front of the green and I have a 50 foot putt. Then I just look back from like I'm, I was 125 yards out. This is yeah. an easy shot for me, and I I. I I, I, I throttle back, and that's probably what I shouldn't do. I should, I should go into it and just go for it. Yeah, just play your game. I should just, yeah, I should, I should step on it and just, just do it and see what happens. I guess. I mean, I could do it a couple of rounds and ain't gonna hurt nothing. No, you know, you're not playing a tournament when you're going no. out and playing by yourself. That's the time to work on all those exactly. fun things as yep. well. So I got a buddy of mine brought me a shot ski, or he called it a brewski. You want to do a shot with our beers off it. of it? Let's All right. It. When you push this, just be careful with the cord so it doesn't come undone. For those who are watching, you'll notice that this looks familiar from about two episodes ago. And he 
made this or Who bought it for it? me. Justin Edwards. Okay. My yeah. best man at my wedding. So he's like, I saw this on uh, some movie, and I think it's also on Out Cold. I don't know if you've ever seen it that is. movie. There's like four of them doing it, though. Yeah, it's like off of a ski off or a, ski. a snowboard yeah. or something like that. So this is kind of similar. So as we flip mm -hmm. it up, the camera's going to see the brewski on the bottom. He got this for me as a gift for the podcast just Love starting it. out. So Dope. let's try to take our shot here. I'll move that. All right. Ah, the old shot ski off the brewski. Worked good. All right, back to it. So I had a, um, a question from one of my listeners. Yeah. And it kind of goes back to the softball, baseball. And it comes from a guy named Ryan Meyer, not the guy from that you're talking no, about. Okay. My mm. Ryan Meyer. He's from Holman, and he wants to know who's going to have the most home runs in softball this year. And I'd like to think it's me, but this guy mashes the hell out of a ball. And he beat me the last two years. I think three years ago, I beat him on the very final swing of the season. It went over. I think I had 15 that season. He had 14. But last year, he was just killing the ball. So, Ryan, I have to tip my hat off to you. You're probably going to win it. But I'll come in second and still talking as much smack as possible. <laughs> still doing it, though. <laughs> uh, so, lastly, I want to get into with you because we've already been going for an hour. doesn't yeah. seem like it's no. been that much. but It's like garage beers, man. I, well, the <laughs> We one do it for six. <laughs> We do that for six. This is nothing. Yeah. Um, so what do you do for work then? Because I know where you work, but I don't know yeah. specifically what you do. And sometimes you have funky hours, and that was kind of where we were trying to make a time for you to come here yeah. and do this. And you're like, oh, if I don't work, and I know you yeah. kind of sometimes have weird hours, so I always try to get those who have somewhat goofy hours yeah. to come on first if possible. Yeah. So first, where do you work at? Uh, Peerless Industrial Group. Okay. I've been there, April will be 14 years. So wow, you've been there a while. Yeah, so I started uh, entry level, needing a job in 09 was kind of shitty, you know. It no, wasn't, wasn't a right. great time. So, you know, I kind of applied a lot of places just to get something. I went to school for carpentry. Um, did that for a year, and then that that job went under. So I oh, got to find something. Um, reached reached out to a couple people, and they're like, "Oh no, don't need anyone, don't need anyone." So uh, applied at Peerless Chain, and uh, got a call back. Come in for an interview. Yep, went in, got hired for general production. Started on the floor. Um, I think it was probably about nine months. I think somewhere in there, six nine months. Um, entry level um then i went uh into quality control for three years did that and then they had a production supervisor spot open up so applied for that made it to the the last interview got it uh, i've been doing that ever since so 11 years oh wow um i didn't realize you were there for so long yeah that's awesome it. what does cool. peerless first let's go back what does peerless do what what so, is chain chain steel chain steel chains. overhead chain you know uh cargo tie down chain um we do a lot of you know government um uh government tie down chain aircraft carrier tie downs okay kind of cool to see a jet with our chain strapped down uh, um tanks can, can you tell the difference like if you see something like oh, that was made peerless yeah we have a couple patents so we have one that's called a one-way chain okay and the way the ratchet works the chain is almost shaped like a pair all right so that's that's that was one of ours uh for aircraft carrier tie downs so sure. it's, it's pretty cool okay and, so they, and we have it. our we have our hallmark stamped on it and stuff so i oh, gotcha. I'm, wife i don't know if she really notices i don't think she gets annoyed but anytime we're out and about and i see chain i gotta go look at it <laughs> I, I mean I, I don't be weird about it but i want to see if that's ours yeah right and so you know where you're i go for. take a, a peek at it and see if it's our chain or not but it's uh it's a pretty cool process i mean we're on modern marvels um, we actually had a segment oh, nice. on that, so you can actually watch and see. And, you know, you still be in there 14 years uh, looking at the machines and making chain. Cause it's such a medieval thing, you know. Right. It, yep. And it's still been made the same way for, you know, 50 years now. Um, but it's just very impressive the size of the machine to make quarter-inch size chain. Sure. It's, it's a massive machine, you know. It's crazy. Um, so... I still every once in a while I go up and just get memorized watching machine make chain links. It's it's pretty cool. So you can actually watch you guys. There was a segment on Modern Marvels. Yep. Yeah. The TV actually, show. If you, yeah. If you go to our website, it's on there. Oh, okay. So you can see the chain process. It's for those cool. who are not familiar, Winona is really big for a company named Fastenal. But there's also other companies within that that are really big and peerless. I would say is one of the maybe the second biggest in uh, town. Maybe it's got to be. It's got to be up there. Yeah, it's got to be right up there. I know. And then the other one's probably RTP or something. I'd or say Bay it goes State probably Fastenal, 
Well, fast on <clears throat> RTP, peerless. I mean, they're yep. it's it's up top five for sure. So, did you think when you first got this? <clears throat> excuse me, when you first got this job, did you think you're going to be there for this long, or were you just I like, had I had no clue, honestly. Because you just, said you're a carpentry first, yeah, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Went to school for carpentry, and uh, I mean, I ended up really liking it. It was great. Yep. I didn't mind it. You know, I worked. We we did the swing shifts back then. Um, What's which, a swing shift? So two weeks first, two weeks second, two week third. Oh, so you had to go on. You uh, had to rotate, which I didn't oh. mind it because um, I mean, we switched now back years years back now where it's you know shift by seniority. So the longer you've been there, you get the cream of the crop. Oh, sure. You get the pre the the shift premium you call it or the premium shift. So. Take your pick. You get more to be on second and third, you get less to be on day shift. Gotcha. So, okay. you know, I mean, there's guys that they, they, they prefer the second or third shift. Yeah, you know? I couldn't do second shift because isn't that like 11 to 7? I did not like second shift. I could. I, I 3 to up, 11. 3 to 11. There you go. It's second shift, but 11 p.m., 7 a.m. is night shift. There you go. There you go. And I did that at a hotel one time, and I was like, oh, this isn't bad because then when I'm sleeping, everyone else is already at work, so it's kind of the same right. thing. It's just tougher to get bed. But it's like that – Second shift, you miss out on a lot. I think. <clears throat> I feel like personally, too, because what are you going to do when you get done? done? E, well, people are going to bed. Done almost. at eleven. People are have already been in bed. And it's like, well, yeah. a if you go to bed, you can get up at six, seven o'clock, still have a full day, you know, yep. before, which is nice. Um, my problem was, I was like, well, I got nothing to do. All my other friends are at work. I got, I got nothing going on when I'm on second shift. Right. So I just stay up, watch, you know, movies, TV till one, two in the morning. Oh crap! I don't really like this. And then you sleep till you know ten. Oh, wake up, make lunch, go to work. Yeah. Uh, third shift, I actually enjoyed the crap out of third shift. Yeah. Going in at you know eleven o'clock at night, getting done at seven a.m., picking what you want to do. Either have your morning mm-hmm. to sleep, your morning to go do something, your your evening. I loved it. It worked great. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. I, second shift to me would be the one that they had to pay me the most for. Yeah, <laughs> but exactly. Doesn't third usually get the most pay? Uh, ours ours pays the same, but usually okay. third is a little bit more. Yeah. So when you first started, what was your day to day life like there? Cut and chain, man. Cut and chain. Cut and chain, assembling hooks, you name it. All right. Um, putting up drum stock. Okay. So, yeah. Now, what's your days look like? Uh, what's your title now? So, so I'm a senior production supervisor. So okay. I actually run the secondary operations at Peerless, and then another gentleman, Jason, runs the first half of operations of the the cleaning of the rod, the wire forming, and the chain making. So I own all the secondary stuff of assembly, plating, um, things of that nature. Okay. So. I mean, there, there's a lot going on, man. We're, we're busy. Well, I bet. I we mean, got you need, everyone needs chain. 30-some 30, 30 you know, people that report to me. I got another individual a supervisor that reports to me, and he has you know, another dozen people report to him. So we got a pretty good fleet. Are you still hands-on with stuff or not so much mm, anymore? No. no. It's union shop, so management can't have hands-on. Oh, so. darn it. it, it's, it I enjoy getting hands-on. Like, yeah. it, it was fun. I don't As mind, a carpenter, I, I don't mind getting dirty, man. That's how you learn. That's how I learn anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, it's, it's, you know, it is what it is. It's the rules. Got to follow it, which well, right, I yeah. can do that. But if, if anyone ever needs a hand we can help out. Okay. I mean, we're not just like, nope, can't touch it. Sure. No, we can help you out. You All know? Right. And I'm always willing to help anyone out if they're struggling with something because I did a lot of those jobs. So when they're asking, they're, oh, man, oh, you know, oh, you knew that? I they did, think you just sit up in an office they and that's think, it. Yep, yeah. and I, I go, <laughs> I, I did this job for, you know, six, nine months, whatever it was yep. when I started here. And you're like, no kidding? I'm like, yeah, I started on the floor just like you did, man. Yeah. So we, we like to promote within, you know, the people that are most knowledgeable are the ones that have already worked there. Right, yeah. So it makes it a, a lot easier. Sometimes when you get that office job or whatever it might be, I just assume you're in an office yeah. of some sort. They think you're just, uh, go do Don't this, go nothing. do that. Oh, yeah. That's all, yeah. That's... I just had one of those guys the other, Uh-oh. you know, like nah, maybe six months ago. But, you know, he's, he said it, you know, well, what do you know? You're just in the office all day. And I went, what do I know? As I said, I did that job. No, you didn't. I go <laughs> ask people. I went and asked around. He goes, "I didn't know that you actually started back here." I said, "You wouldn't know that." <laughs> no, I, yeah. It was so. Have you ever gotten to a pissing match with someone like that because they came in and said, "You don't know what you're talking about. You've never done this." Uh, not not a pissing match. No, just, just more or less like, "Well, what do you know?" And so I've, I've been in your shoes, man. I did that yep. job, and then they kind of, you know, oh really? Yep. Like, sure. I, I didn't just come into the office off the street right yeah you know, i was started when i was 
20 years old. All right. Yeah. Now you're 34? Well, April will be, yeah. I okay. started a week before my birthday, which is kind of easy sure. to keep track of. So. Sure. And is there, are you going to keep trying to move up? Is there more room to move up? Or? I mean, there potentially is. I, I really like what I do. Uh, I, I'm, you know, on the floor a lot more, not okay. just solely at a desk all day. Sure. And that's not what, I mean, you need to be on the floor and be out there, be active. Mm-hmm. People have questions. So I like to, to keep busy that way, and that's more my style. I'm, okay. not, I'm not a meeting guy. Yeah. Not a traveling guy. I mean, I just I'm I'm a homebody. You know, sure. I I go places, but I you I'm go a home, golf. I'm courses. a homebody. You go to golf courses. The wife always says, "Will you go golf?" And I go, "Yeah, but we can drive. It's with like three, four, five hours." Yeah, and I'm back. That's doable. I'm okay. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, I I uh I like to get out on the floor. Uh, I still like doing that. I don't want to be tied to the computer all day long or conference calls or meetings. That's just not Probably makes style. your day go by faster though. Yeah. Having oh, yeah. Go to this, there, yep. there, there, and instead of one thing over right. and over, that would get a little repetitive. It does. So is there more places within it? Can you, is there a lot more to move up or how, I don't know how far up the chain? I mean, <laughs> a little unquote. bit. I mean, there's my boss's spot. I mean, his, his role could always change sure. and, and move up. So his uh, plant manager would be like the next spot. Okay. I don't, per se really want to get into that part you know i mean but if if the opportunity is there i'm not gonna say no sure but i'm also not looking for it either okay you know i like what i really enjoy what i do well, that's good yeah. i mean not everyone can always say that they right. like what they do and that's great that you do um so yeah i didn't know what specifically i figured peerless chain may chain that just makes sense but i didn't know what the day-to-day operations are like and yeah. we've never actually sat down and just kind of talked about what no. you do yeah. i mean you know that i'm a real estate agent and a teacher right. you already know what that entails yeah. but within all these big companies that we have in town here didn't always know what everyone did or right. what the idea was you know i know that there's factory work and you're on the floor i know that part but then what do you do as you keep moving up and now you kind of giving yeah. us a little insight to it which is kind of neat i yeah. think no it's a uh, cool place a lot of good people too i mean it's a it's a it's an awesome place to work. That's why I've been there for 14 years. It's not because yeah. it sucks. Right. Because yeah. I really enjoy it. I enjoyed it when I was on the floor. I enjoy it where I'm at now. And you know, the biggest thing is people just attendance. Man, they don't know how to show up. That that oh, irritates gosh. me. That would irritate. irritates me. That's my that's my biggest thing is just just show up, man. Yep. G- give me something. Give me 60. percent It's better than not showing up. Oh yeah. Literally. I mean, I tell people this. Just show up. At least you're putting the effort forward to be there on time and work. Yep. You know, you might not, you know, might not be the guy next to you that can crank it out, make it look easy, because you know, maybe you learn differently. Yep. And and I'm not one to judge on it, but show up is the most important part about a job. You know, I know you're getting paid for a service. You know, nowadays everyone wants handouts, and I want this, I want that, I'm worth this. Well, but the, the you're getting paid. That's the service. Is you're getting paid. Yep. Extra handouts are fine and dandy and great, but. You're accepting the payment. That's that's your reward is yep. your payment and and going home, you know, with a with a check, you know. And I, I think people have lost that. And I've, I I think I you're haven't, right. I, I didn't grow up that way. My dad, my mom, like I didn't grow up that way. You know, had to borrow twenty bucks from my, you know, take take the wife now. Back then, you know, <laughs> to a movie date. Oh my, twenty bucks got gonna, you a date? Well, it got it got it got Chinese and a dinner date. Whoa! Or it got Chinese and and movie. You know, because oh back then gosh. it was only like, I mean, I had a little bit of money, but not yeah, much. Right. Um, you know, so it'd be like, Mom, I got borrowed twenty bucks. You know, I'm hoping she forgets a week later and week, you know, comes by. <laughs> hey, you stole me twenty bucks. That's that's how I grew up. You sure? You know, that's good. And uh, I'm still kind of that way, you know. Did you so, have a job in high school? I did. Uh, Where'd you work at? A couple jobs. Um, <clears throat> actually, my parents' neighbor, uh, Jack Gunnerson, uh, owner of uh, XL Images out by okay. Shopco. Yep. So uh, I did that one for the school year. But I had quite a few, too, because Charlie Mary Roofing, um, Charlie up yep. the road, yeah, right neighbor. Next door. <laughs> so that was like my first job, working in the summer for him, doing some roofs and stuff. Sure. So that was always a lot of fun. Did that for a couple of years. Got some bad feet, so I kind of got out of it. It was just too hard. But um, did that, did excellent images, and then I also worked at the hospital and the food service, which that might have been my favorite job I've ever had. Really? I, the stories you hear, man, You, I mean, you're – you're giving food to people who are 80, 90, 100 sure. years old. The, the stuff they've lived through. Oh, them telling it, you stuff. Yeah. Oh, cool. It was, I, I just delivered the food, you know, to, yeah. to the, the lunch area. And then I was, uh, 
I was the snack guy at night. So I'd go up at night after we served dinner and then hand out snacks. And that's where all the stories came from. Oh, sure. A yeah. lot of people get mad at me because, you know, it was like 4 to 8, 830 at the latest was our shift. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I went to 845. And it's because the, the, some of the elderly like want to sure. talk. You know, yeah. they haven't seen family. haven't visited them in a couple of days. And I heard a lot of stories you that's know awesome. so it was, it was cool it was, it was one of my favorite jobs i've ever had wow i i would not have thought that i really enjoy what i do now yeah. but that was probably my favorite job yeah I've ever had. Well, i mean old people you know they always have something and they do want to talk because, absolutely especially if they're at the hospital or a nursing yep. home or whatever it might nursing be home, that's all they wanted was just to talk yep they so, don't ever want your money they just no. want time i, I all like, ever want my my kid when she's old enough i i'm gonna tell her to go apply there in the food service because she'll it, it's enjoyable and the hours aren't bad you got to work every other weekend but everyone had to do it, so it wasn't sure. too bad. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I wanted to touch on, and I had a question I wanted to ask you. Oh, carpentry. You went to for carpentry, mm-hmm. right? Do you still use any of those? Do you do any oh, side yeah. jobs or anything for Not people? Not side jobs, just but, more or less around the house. And if, if someone needs help with stuff. Yeah, you helped me with my, uh, my, my what was it, my uh, folding door? Well, kind of. Like, <laughs> kind of. Oh, yeah. We got a few we, drinks we, in us. Yeah, I don't think we got every, it. We no, tried. It, uh... I'll say I'm glad I'm I'm happy what I'm doing for my career. Um, the school part it was it's just nice base knowledge to have. Sure, yeah. So like I think that was pretty beneficial. Um, wife, you know, got to assemble a lot of stuff here and there. So some of the direction she gets suck ass. <laughs> I make it work. <laughs> That's you right. Know? Yeah, you're... build some shelves, things of that nature. Nothing crazy. No, um, just the basic stuff. If, that you if need. I needed to remodel something, I could. But at the same time, too, I was more. I wasn't more of the finisher. I was more of the the uh, the framer. Okay. So the finish work, like cabinetry stuff, like that. That's not my forte. It, I can do it, but I'm gonna be. Um, I'm going to be a little too picky on myself. Okay. I'm not going to like it. If something's just a little off, it's going to bug me. Okay. And <laughs> that's why I, I would honestly pay someone to do it. My dad's like that. He, it's got to be perfect. <clears throat> yep. And that's like when you came in here, you saw like the floor. The yeah. floor had to be perfect. It's awesome. And then if you do more looking around here, he's done a lot of other things around yeah. this garage, but he's very picky as yep. well. Uh, so I know, I know what that's like. I'd be too picky. <laughs> not many would probably see it. But it would drive me insane. That's exactly so how I he is. So I would just have, to, you know, I, I think I'd rather just pay someone so I don't sit there and really critique it. You know yeah. what I mean? So. Well, that's good. Um, I mean, do you have anything else you like to add? Any good stories you got or anything that you'd like to share? Not a whole lot, man. No, no. summer's coming right around the corner. Golf is about to pick up. I, I'm really hoping March is here. You know, I, well, I mean, next it, week's it, well, it is actually almost here, and I'm hoping the golf course open up in March so we get an extra month of golfing. Well, yeah, I saw some people were golfing. What was it last week? And I don't know if they were. Trempolo was open. Really, um, Westfield open. was open. I thought about it. I had a couple people ask, and you know. I don't want to be out there with 90 other people just doing the same thing of saying, I golfed yeah. in February in Minnesota. Like, it's cool, yeah. but I, I golf at the simulator in town. That's golfing. And, oh, and, that's know. right. There's a new so, golf simulator place. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's fun, but I'll I'll wait for the summertime when it's nice and enjoyable. Is there anything you do in the winters to pass the time until golf season comes <laughs> around? Or So I do a little bit of gaming. I like to nerd out a little bit. Oh, what are you playing? Call of Duty. Okay, Call of Duty. I like to do a little bit of that. Nice. Waiting for uh, Grand Theft Auto, new one to come out. But I oh, think that's I still like a couple years out. But I've been a big Call of Duty guy for forever, so my wife don't like it because <laughs> Golf summer game winner. I go, well, yeah, but what? Else? It's or it's watch TV. But I said you can only do so much of that. Right. Yeah. I said so. I do a little bit of gaming. Nice. Nothing so you're playing crazy. Call of Duty? Yeah, nothing crazy. But I hear all of my students talking about Fortnite this and some other yeah. stuff. I don't know what the, I don't really know what that's all about, but I do know Grand Theft Auto. I know Fortnite, but I don't know. Never played it. Don't yeah. really know what you do. So. I, I'm not a big gamer by any means, but when Grand Theft Auto does come out, I will buy that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just my nephew, who's like. 10 he's gonna be 10 i believe oh, this gonna, june he loves playing grand theft auto 5 and he's gonna be all for it then oh i know he is he comes over to our house and aunt and uncle are oh yeah letting that. them play but mom and dad mom don't really like, care but <laughs> yeah. the game is a little different than it used to be uh, when grand very, theft auto used to come out very yeah yep. uh you can go into a strip club now oh, oh yeah yeah you pay for it yeah and then you kill them and take your money back it's it's oh, just bad God. it's bad I know. <laughs> oh yes, I can only imagine what six is going to be like. I mm-hmm. 
that's one game I will play for a little bit, but I can't sit down. I like some people they can play for hours on end. I get I'm a maybe an hour at max. Yeah, here and I, there. I can. It depends if there's a, a something you're working on or doing. Yep. Gotcha. But like, there's times where I'm like sitting there doing it. I'm like, I have nothing. Like no new rewards I got to go after attachments or yep. accomplishments. And I just get bored. Like, I'm just sitting there like, I'm just, I'm going to go watch TV because there's yeah. nothing for me to do right now. Yep. So. Well, ga- video games have come so far, f- even in the last 20 years. I just, I just bought a new TV. Oh, how big? It's a 50. It's okay. just my game TV. Oh, gotcha. So I bought that uh, and it's a 4K. Wild. Totally different Wild. experience. I, it's so crazy. I had a plasma TV. <laughs> I saw the sticker on the back from 2008 is when I bought it. Oh, wow. For $2,200. Probably from Audio Designs. No, I actually got it from oh. Best Buy. Okay. I remember I, I, had, I needed my mom to, to actually take the credit card out because I wasn't old enough, but I worked here and there to make the money. But it was 2200 bucks. Yeah, those were so nuts. And uh, I bought that TV, and that, that's my I – mean, it still works. I yeah. just was like, you know what? I think I'm kind of missing out on something here. So I went and got the new one. It was only like 330 bucks. I know. For a 4K 50 inch. I'm like, why the fuck? Looking at that one, like, why was that $2,000? I know. So. My parents still have a 15 inch TV in their kitchen that's plasma yep. from Audio Designs when they were in the mall. Yep. And that one, oh, I think that was like 700 bucks too yeah. back then. Oh, yeah. It still works. It's crazy. I mean, the, the quality of the plasma is still great. It's just it, it, uh, it lacked a little bit with the game console. Sure. You know? Yeah. I mean, the game console is probably up here. It, the TV's ex- way down exactly. here at that point. But the picture-wise is still really good. Yeah. I mean, it's just the new one's a little bit brighter, a little bit more crisp. Oh, you sure, know, sure. And, and things of that nature. But um, for that TV, I mean, it's still rocking strong since 08. So. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Nowadays, everything, you can buy it for so much cheaper. Oh, crazy. And, I, I mean, you would you say you spent $2,200 yeah. on that? on a 42-inch plasma TV. I bought an 84. Two inch, the eighty two inch TV that's in my house, mounted and installed, was like fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, it's just nuts. Yeah, how I know. Different that is. It's wild. Well, anyways, um, that's where I think we can end right Wrap there, it man. Up, man. It's well, good to have you here. Appreciate for, you stopping by. Yeah, thanks for Cheers, having me. Cheers, and we'll be having more garage beers in the summer. Absolutely. Tune in next week, and if you don't mind, or if it is so happens to be for you, subscribe, like, comment, whatever you can do to possibly help out this channel. I would appreciate it much. You can find us on Apple Podcast. You can find me on Spotify, obviously YouTube. If you're watching, you know where to go. But tune in next week. We'll be here with another guest with more fun and interesting topics. Cheers.